hey guys welcome back to my channel so for today we are going to do something a little fantastical now i don't generally do things fantasy type things or whatever but you know how sometimes you get an image in your head and you just can't get rid of it until you do it well this is one of those times so it's going to be a combination of space slash ocean ish and we're going to make it into a wall hanging. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had asked you guys an, a question on what you wanted to see me make. And this is going to be the first one in the line of subscriber inspired kind of videos. And this one is for Beverly Tinsley. Now, you said you wanted home decor. It's home decor. It's a little different, but... Nonetheless, that is what it is. All right, back to the video. So this is my Let's Resin Epoxy Resin, and I just mixed up a little bit, and I used my Rolio Deep Black Pigment Paste to color it. Now, I want this to be a very thin layer because this is going to be a multi-layered piece. However, that being said, where I want it to be very thin, I do need to make sure that it is completely opaque. I don't want to see through this at all. This is going to be our deep space kind of setting for everything else that's going to go on top of it. Now, I did make sure that I went around all of those edges. I smoothed it out, hit it with my heat gun, all of that fun stuff just to make sure that I don't get any bubbles or anything dumb. And we're going to let this do its thing, right? Hit it one last time with the heat gun just to make sure any of those bubbles have popped. I don't anticipate any issue with bubbles. When you're pouring super thin layers like this, there's no reason why you're going to get a lot of them. They should pretty much pop on their own, but, you know, would like to help it along. Okay, so this is going to be our first kind of real layer to start building stuff up. So again, I mixed up a little bit of resin, and I have two cups. Now, I'm going to start making, I want to say it's called a nebula. And this is going to take a couple different layers. So we're going to do this in steps. Now, the first thing that I'm using is I am using some of my Let's Resin Pink Interference. And then I'm going ahead and I'm going to, in a separate cup, I'm going to use Rolio's Fluorescent Powders. Now... These are not opaque, okay? They're, they're transparent. They have like a, I don't want to say like a fogginess to them, they're, but they're not opaque. But they're not completely transparent either, if that kind of makes sense. Anyway, mixing that up, and this is the pink one. Now, they only do colors. It's number 8806 in their fluorescent set. And then I'm going to add a little bit of my Art & Glow pink glow powder to this. So I'm hoping that I'm going to kind of start getting some, or that it's going to be able to go, be glow in the dark, right? I'm, I'm not sure how it is when you mix it in with other pigments, but we're going to see. For my stars, I'm just using some Sterling Glitter by Solian. Now... In hindsight, I probably could have done with less. Like, I didn't hardly put any in there at all. And, I mean, we've got a super, super starry space thing. Like, it, it's it's a bit much, honestly. I kind of wish I would have done a little bit less because I do think it's a little overpowering. But, I guess, I mean, I've never been to outer space, so maybe it is, like, super crazy starry like this when you don't have the lights and all of the stuff that we have down on Earth, you know? Like, maybe that is what you see. I don't know. We're gonna go with it. It'll be fine. So, going over, smoothing over all of this, making sure I'm hitting all my edges and that I've got just a nice layer on here. And then we're gonna start kind of... We're going to start building this nebula out. And if I'm wrong on it and it's not a nebula, we're going to pretend for all intents and purposes today that's what it's going to be because that's what I'm going to call it. All right. So I'm going to take my, well, I start off with a, 
trying to do with dotting tool, it's not going to work. So I'm just going to take my popsicle stick and I'm going to figure out where I want the center of my nebula to be. And then I am placing some of my fluorescent resin into the center and I'm just going to start kind of pulling it out from the center in kind of like an elongated oval type shape to start getting that kind of swirl pattern where the middle is more intense and it kind of fans out the wider that you get if that makes sense and honestly like this is a process you work at this for a while to get it to kind of just go on its own and get it wide out because we know as the resin cures it's going to start pulling it back into the middle again right so we want to make sure that it's nice and big and we're starting to get that shape that you want but you want to start with your your pigments and your colors and whatever you choose to do in the middle same thing with the interference pink now i'm going in there and this is where i tried the dotting tool and it just wasn't giving me quite enough so i want that center the color in there and then I'm going to work it out. You don't want to start on the outside and work in because it's going to be harder to kind of control where your color is going and it, it's you just you want it to fan out if that makes sense. Like think about when you see the pictures from space it fans out and it gets kind of more and more I guess almost translucent to the point where you can kind of see through it towards the edges but that color and that mainness is like right there in the middle so that's what we're going for and i'm just going to work on this part until i am happy with the color until i'm happy with the shape and then after that we're just gonna kind of just let it dry I am going to go back in and add more white because I wanted to have a heavier like middle to it more with more of the white and the white's going to kind of counteract some of that transparency from the fluorescent powders and give it that opaqueness so that it's not completely completely see through and then I'm just going to go in and put little lines going in the same kind of flow that my nebula is going in and just add little lines so that it's going to be slightly heavier a little bit more dimension and depth and just more in those areas where i'm kind of just putting the touches right so that when i go around and i hit that ink i'm pulling it some but not completely so that i do have a little bit more in the lines and patterns and you know what i mean like we're just going to keep playing with this now i'm going in and i can't remember for life of me what they're called they're little clear tight ball things and i've got them in champagne and i've got them in pink and i've got them in just like a clear kind of whitey one and i'm just going to kind of throw them around on the outside mix them up break them up these are going to kind of be like planets if you will far far off planets but planets okay that first layer is dry. Now it's time for the next layer. Now we are going to do the same thing minus the glitter. Not using any more glitter. We've got that done. So I'm going in with my clear and I am going to spread this out, heat it up. I put some off to the side in the two cups for the same colors. I'm same colors over again, right? We're just going to build up a second layer, give it a little bit more dimension, a little bit more depth, a little bit more color, and just more, I guess. Okay, so just getting that clear resin just to kind of spread out all along our edges. And now it's time to mix the colors again, going in the same way, a little bit of the fluorescent powder, a little bit of the glow powder, mixing those up. Do the same thing with the interference pink. I'm just going to get some of that in there to kind of help with the opacity and to give it more color and just, you know, some different, different effects to it. All right. So this time I'm starting with the white and I want the center to be heavier in the white. Now, the one thing that you want to make sure is that you're kind of as best you can when you're dragging your stick and going in that oval, you want to just keep coming back to the middle and working your way all the way out. It's going to make the lines of 
your oval to make it look like it's getting pulled into the center. So you just want to make sure that you're working it out, working that resin so it's naturally kind of fanning it, naturally kind of just going in and those colors just kind of spreading out gradually as opposed to just stopping all of a sudden. So when I'm doing it, I am going, I'm trying to keep the oval the same. It, it does move around a little bit. So I did that and then I waited an hour. Now my resin is thick. Now this is where I'm going to be able to get more intense lines and more intense detail in this. So starting with the white again, because that is going to actually give me more of the definition than this pink is, I'm going in the center and I'm pulling that out. And then once I get to the point with it where I'm kind of happy with the way that that's going, I'm going to go in with more heavy lines like I'm doing right now to kind of show the like the way I guess the oval that that shape of that is going and these lines where I will spread them out some I want them to be heavier here like I want you to actually be able to see it I just want to kind of soften it up just a little bit if that kind of makes sense and what I'm doing and the reason that we're doing this in multiple layers is you can kind of sort of see that first layer underneath and then we're pulling it up bringing it out adding more dimension to it adding more depth with depth and shape with these colors and then we're gonna let this one dry now you could go in here and you could do it again and do the same thing over again if you wanted to I'm going to call it quits after this one because I have other things that I want to add to it, which is why I'm going in with more detail of the pink and heavier lines and more detail of the white with heavier lines because this I know is going to be my last layer for this part. So I just want to make sure that I have everything exactly how I want it. And I am, every time I take my dotting tool out, I am kind of going and, and wiping it off and then I'm going to come in with my palette knife and this is just going to add a little bit of a thicker line to my oval and you can already see the shape that this is giving it and it looks pretty awesome now the one thing that I kind of wish I did do is I wish I would have brought the oval itself and elongated it more so that when it dries and it pulls in I have it a little bit more because this is like this part right here is going to be kind of like the main focus of this. Like this is the main thing. I mean, we're going to add to it, but this is the part that your eye is going to get drawn to, right? So I should have made it a little bit bigger, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's nature. Nothing's perfect. So even in the way that I did my oval and I pulled it, I, I kind of wish there was things I did a little bit differently about that. But it's honestly, like, you think that it's easy, and it's not that it's hard, but it kind of is, to make sure that every time you go around, you're pulling it evenly, you're pulling it the way that you want to pull it, and that it works right, and it, it, it doesn't always. But it's fine, it'll be fine, hit it with the heat gun. Okay, so, this is where our ocean-ish part is going to come in. Now, I want to have a whale coming out of the middle of this nebula. So, I got a picture of a humpback whale that I like that was kind of going in kind of like the type of movement that I want him to have. And I put his tail in the middle of the nebula. Now, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I kind of wish that I would have only instead of doing the whole whale and including his tail i kind of wish that i would have brought him in closer and cut it off so that it gave more of the illusion that he was jumping out from the middle of it but it is what it is it's done it's a learning lesson it still looks pretty cool but whatever so instead of using my normal carbon paper because i wouldn't be able to see it i had to go and purchase I guess it's still like a carbon-ish type paper or a wax paper or something like that um, so that when I trace it, I can see the lines in white as opposed to black. So this way, it'll make my life that much easier when I go to paint it. Now, after I get this done and on here, 
we're going to paint this image on here and we're going to have some fun with this. Now, it's already kind of looking really cool. Like, I'm super happy with this. But as I paint it, you guys have seen me paint before. I'm not going to talk through this part. I'm just going to kind of let you watch it. And then I will be back on the flip side when we are at the next step. I'm back so towards the end i just recently purchased these paints by folk art 
and they're called diamond glaze paints and essentially it's kind of like they're like color shifting paints but acrylic paint and i did go over the whale with it and it's just to kind of give the more fantasy type illusion of it i realize it kind of probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to some people as to why i did it but if you've ever looked at those like space ocean type pictures with the whales that's kind of how they have like a bunch of bright colors on them and stuff like that so i kind of just wanted to add that to it just to make it less realistic in that form but and more fantasy ish and then i'm gonna go and take those same paints and i'm going to highlight some of the kind of like where i would see it like pulling towards the center of my nebula and this is just going to add more depth and dimension to this piece and then i'm just going to kind of throw some color down in some certain areas and we're going to do some stuff with it later and this can be like whatever like there was necessarily not a whole lot of i didn't necessarily have a plan exactly at the time but it ends up working out kind of cool and it just gives it some different stuff to look at, you know, so it's not just all black with silver glitter. You know, I there's other things in space other than just that and I kind of just wanted it to be something else. All right. So now I'm I'm not happy with it. I want some more color. I want some more like fluorescent neon colors in there. So I just pulled out the whole set of the Rolio fluorescent. I had an idea about making more 3d type planets with this little jewelry mold that i have but i didn't like the way that it looked because they are more like diamond cut type things and it just didn't look good so i decided that i'm just going to kind of plop circles down in random spaces with a few different colors and in into each one of the colors that i'm using i am adding some of my art and glue um glow powder to it so that i Hopefully it'll glow and give it that much more when it's done. Now with the white, I put it on here after I do it. I have white glow powder. Well, it's white powder. However, it glows red. I didn't have any just like white, white glowing stuff. So when I put it on here, I didn't necessarily think of the glow aspect of it exactly like i knew i wanted it to glow but i didn't think about the being red part so i kind of go in at the end here after i'm done dotting a bunch of stuff and i dot some bigger stars because i thought it would be cool until i realized they glow red but it's fine it's fine It'll be fine. But I am, I did decide that I want to go, and I am mixing this with UV resin. Sorry for this. I'm using my Stoyo UV resin and then my Lights resin dual light to cure it. And this is where it could be a problem because when I add the powder to it, I, I, I'm only using the, like the tiniest little bit of resin because I don't need a bunch of resin for it. And then I add the glow powder to it as well. And it is pretty opaque once I got all of that in there. So I really wasn't sure if I was going to have an issue with the curing part. But I'm hoping that since it's so little, it'll be okay. And that even if it doesn't, I guess, get all the way through once I put my regular resin on top, hopefully I won't have any issues. I guess time will tell. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, going in, dotting them, putting the kind of planets where I want them, just to add some more kind of just interest to this piece. And then I decided that with the white, I'm going to go in and kind of highlight all of those, like, not stripes, but all the lines that go down the bottom part of a humpback whale, just to make him stand out more, even without the glow aspect of it, right? And then dot his eye because why not I, I just want him to to really pop going in and again adding these little details into the nebula to make it more 3d to make it more realistic to make it look like it's actually kind of like swirling 
and, and whatever, like, that's what I'm going for. Now, I wanted to kind of have, like, almost like a splash kind of thing coming out from the middle to show that he was jumping up through it. But I couldn't work out in my head exactly how to do it without completely ruining this. So we're just not going to do it on this one and just kind of go with it. Now, after I'm done with all of the dots and all of my planets and the colors and all of that, I am going to let it cure for a good five minutes all over it. And then we're going to pour the next layer of resin. And here we are. And that's it. Now, in my mind, this was it. I'm done. This is the last layer. And I think it looks cool. I love how when you pour resin over something, especially like this, how it just brings it all to life. Like, just look at the whale and how as the resin's flowing over it, it just makes it pop that much more. And I like how those little planets that I just put in there the 3D illusion of them because I just let them be like balls falling up on the top as opposed to just like flat circles. They're actually protruding up, not over top of the resin that I just poured, but it just gives it that much more dimension and and just, oh, I love it. I think it's so, so cool. Like I really, really do like it a lot so far. But this is it. So I am going through now. I did not completely fill up this mold. And that's fine. I don't necessarily need to. It, it, it doesn't matter. I've finally got this piece worked out. And I've been thinking about it and working on this for so long. Because it did take a long time to make this piece. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of different steps. A lot of different layers. A lot of everything. So we're going to let it cure. Okay. So at this point, I am finished. Like, I was done. This was it. I wasn't going to do any more. So I took it out. I demolded it. I filed the edge down because it wasn't totally full, so it had a sharp edge to it. And then I started thinking. And ideas came. So there's been a change in plans. I'm no longer done with it. So I remembered that I had these charms, and I, like, never used them. And I know that I had a little space guy and I have a star, and I have a shooting star, so I thought, why not? Why not? I'll fill them up with... Now, these two tiny little black bottles are bottles I got off of Timu. They're supposed to be color-changing UV resin, and I've never even used them yet, so I thought, eh, the hell with it. I'm going to try them out. I mean, not necessarily the colors that one would choose or should choose for it, but I was curious, so I thought, why not? The one is an, a yellow into orange or orange into yellow, and the other one is a pink into brown, which is what I used for the space dude. Again, it's not a huge deal. Like, I wanted to try it. But then I decided that, because those are the only two colors that I had, I didn't want to buy a lot if it wasn't going to work. I decided that I was going to use some of my Light Wish yellow or golden, like, glitter UV resin for the bottom tail of the star. And then I decided that I'm just going to put it over top of the color changing resin. I mean, it's kind of see-through-ish. Going to put a little bit more on our space dude and let this cure for a good five minutes just to make sure it's completely done. And then we're going to have some more fun with this because, you know, like I said, I'm not done yet. So I did pop it back into my mold. Now, there could be issues with this, but it, it hopefully not. Hopefully not. So I mixed up some resin. And I'm just putting that layer down now. And then I'm going to pop my charms in here. Now, I did cut off the little metal hoopy thing that was on them because I don't need it. So I did cut that off before I even put in the UV resin inside of them. And then we're going to kind of put them in here where I was playing around with it. I just want the star kind of floating up in the sky and I thought that the shooting star would look kind of cute over the whale's kind of head body ish and then that cloudy looking thing I got going on at the bottom that I didn't really have a plan with and I threw on there I thought well that would be cool to have my little spaceman kind of floating over there but first of course this time I mixed up too much resin and I poured too much in and I, I've got to add some things so I don't want it to overflow on me. So I took a little bit back out. Okay, 
let's start popping these pieces in and see what we can do. Now, they are not sinking, <laughs> which could be a problem. And I don't necessarily understand why. So I do have to fiddle with them to get them to go under the resin. And because this piece I do want kind of flat. Like I really don't want anything protruding out of the top of it. Uh, I don't want it 3D like that. And then I decided that I was going to take some of my silver or my glitter glass stuff and kind of put it down to almost make it look like it was an area that maybe our spaceman was standing on. I just thought it would be kind of cool. So, you know, and then whatever it is that he's standing on, there's like that plume of, I don't know, maybe like a cloudish type thing going there. So now it looks more like it's actually supposed to be there as opposed to something that was just like, what is this about? And then I got carried away and I was like, oh, well, I got pink glitter and I've got purple not glitter glass and I've got some more silver so I'm just gonna kind of spread the pink around the outside of it to kind of make it look like maybe there's like little asteroids or something kind of floating around the outside of it which I thought was kind of cool and a little bit of purple there around those edges just to kind of make them stand out a little bit more. And then I put silver in the middle by his tail because I don't know why. I just thought that it was a good idea and maybe it would help with that illusion of him jumping out that I wanted. I mean, I don't know necessarily know that it did anything. My favorite parts are the silver down at the bottom and that pink glass around the outer edge. Like, I think that looks really cool. I could have done without the purple and that silver in the middle of it, but it is what it is. You live and you learn. And now that's it. So now I am going to demold this again. I did get a little bit of resin that seeped up under, but it doesn't matter. It's the back. I mean, it'll be fine, but I want to have this hang up and I think it looks really cool. Like, look at that. I like it. I think it's cool. Anyway, I want it to hang up, but I want to do something unique. And I didn't have a silver chain that was kind of like thick enough that would work on its own. So I took this necklace. It's just necklace chain that I purchased a while ago. And I decided that if I double up on it, because this piece is not light, like it's got a lot of resin and it's pretty hefty. So I thought... If I double up on it, it should make it strong enough that it should hold it, hopefully, fingers crossed, and I shouldn't have an issue, but I want it to go all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the bottom, kind of make it even all, all the way around, start in the middle of the bottom, and I'm going to hold it in place with a little bit of UV resin all the way around. After I get the UV resin done and I'm happy with the way things are lined up and everything, I'm going to go in with E6000 glue for a more permanent bond to it so that I don't have any issues with it coming off and all of that nonsense. And then we're just going to join up all of the chain in the middle with a couple of jump rings and hang it up. Now, I haven't hung it up for more than a couple minutes because the glue was just for pictures because the glue is still drying. So I, I'm not sure if the jump ring will hold the weight. I may have to change it later on to something else. But for now, it'll be fine. It it works. I think it looks really cool. Anyway, guys, I'm going to finish this up. That's a wrap on this one. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I will see you guys on Tuesday and the next one. Oh, and real quick, um, just to let you know, I took that poll, I don't know, I, I've given it about a week or so, and the general consensus is the majority rules as far as you guys want to me to do premiere. So that is what we are going to do here in the near future. I just got to figure out some stuff and look at the analytics and find out when the best time is that most of you guys will be on so that it's successful and I'm not just sitting in the chat room by myself talking to me because I can do that all day long. Um, yeah. So anyway, that will be coming. I will do an announcement on my community page when I get done and figure it all out and set up the exact kind of 
time and all that good stuff. Okay, for real though, it's a wrap on this one, guys. You know what to do. And I will catch you guys on Tuesday. Love ya. Bye.